Jerry at Fair Oaks. Jerry. Hey. Hey, wake up. Wake up? <laughs> Who's asleep? Mm, you look like it. Okay, so I'm awake now. What do you want? Hey, you didn't see my ancient history book around, did you? Uh-uh. What'd you want it for? Now, what would I want a book for? I want to look at all the pretty pictures of the Egyptian pyramid. <laughs> What's the matter, can't you read? <laughs> <laughs> Wise guy, huh? No fooling. Did you see it, Jerry? No. Uh, it's around someplace. I'll get it later. I just thought I'd go down to the study hall and work off a couple of those ten demerits. <laughs> I thought you were going to work them off by helping to build a hangar for Mr. X. Oh, I am. But I may as well do everything I can to get rid of them. The faster I work, the faster I'll be rid of them. Uh-huh. <sighs> What's the matter with you? Oh, I was just thinking. About what? Oh, about everything. About the meat, about the fight. About everything in general and nothing in particular. <laughs> I was kind of giving my thoughts to a double chocolate sundae with chopped almonds on top of it. Maybe a little whipped cream on it now that I'm out of training. Mm-hmm. Sounds good. Ah, oh, it is good, my friend. Would you like to have one now? Sure I would. In fact, I think I will. Uh-uh, my lad. Remember the demerits. Remember the within bounds. Oh, that's right. I wouldn't mind the demerits. I can work them off, but uh, I gotta stay within bounds, and that's what hurts. Ah, oh, it does that, me lad. Just think. While you're bending over an ancient history class book, digging out the facts about Caesar, Alexander the Great, I'll be in Mac's place. All those fellows were great guys, Lee, but they can't come up to a double chocolate sundae with chopped nuts and whipped cream. <laughs> Look, Mr. Dugan, just one more mention of that sundae and I'm going to plant one on your chin. Yes, sir. A double chocolate sundae with all the trimmings. And on a rainy day like this, there's nothing like sitting in Mac's warm store. Just sitting quiet and eating the Sunday. Jerry, for the love of Mike, did I ride you when you were kept within bounds? No. No, you didn't, Lee. And I apologize to you for being such a pal. I apologize for bringing up the subject of a nice chocolate Sunday with chopped nuts and whipped cream. I apologize for bringing up the subject of Mac's cozy little store. <laughs> I apologize for reminding you that, well, you've got to bury your nose in an ancient history book. Dis, dis, dis. I was mean, wasn't I, for mentioning a double chocolate... That... <laughs> hey! Oh, it's warm! <laughs> the next time I'll throw something hard in the pillow. <laughs> My friend, your nasty temper has got the better of you over such a trifle uh, as a double chocolate... You asked for it. You're hey, gonna get it, out. too. Hey, I'll give you a cho you. double chocolate uh, nut. And Lee, I'll... Lee, <laughs> remember your blood pressure. Uh, disc, disc. Uh, that'll show you. Uh, and all over a double uh, chocolate... Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> okay, we'll forget about it. But I am going to Mac's place. <laughs> I want to see him. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll walk over to Custis Hall with you. Okay. Come on. I better straighten up first. I'll do it while I'm walking. Come on. Okay. Say, have you seen Red Morrison since you had the battle with him? Mm-mm. No, he's keeping pretty much to himself. And with Bruce Dow Campbell. Yeah, that's a shame, too. You know, Bruce could be a good egg, but, well, he's just got off on the wrong foot. Yeah. Oh, there's Sergeant Alden going into Custis Hall. Mm-hmm. I'll bet that he's going to look at the trophy again. <laughs> good afternoon, Sergeant Alden. Oh, hello, Lee. Hello, Jerry. Hello, sir. 
Well, what are you bound for? Well, I was bound for study hall. And I was bound for a double chocolate sundae in Max's place. Wasn't I, Lee? <laughs> yeah. In fact, I still am. Uh, will you have one, Sergeant Alden? Uh, no, thanks, Jerry, but I'll walk over with you. I'm going to the hardware store. Uh, well, okay. Uh, I'll see you later, Jerry. Goodbye, Sergeant Goodbye, Alden. Lee. So long, Lee. Well, coming along, Jerry? Oh, oh, yes, sir. Gee, I... I wish Lee didn't have to stay within bounds for the rest of the week, sir. Well, I do too, Jerry, but I'm afraid there's nothing we can do about it. Uh, Lee said you were swell in the, the meeting. Oh, nonsense. Oh, but it was swell, sir. Telling the officers that there was some excuse for Lee coming back to the field. Oh, uh, that reminds me, Jerry. I have some more good news for you. About Splendor, sir? That's right. He'll be about ready to come back here the first of next week. Oh, gee, that's great. Then he's all better, sir? Well, not quite, Jerry. But he'll make it all right now. There's and there's no more danger of infecting the other horses, so I'm having him brought back here just as soon as possible. Oh, poor old Splendor. After practicing for the meet, he didn't get to ride in it. Yes, and... Oh, 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 oh watch the arch there, Jerry. Oh, yes, sir. I'll see you on the pavement. right up. Ah, and back again, sir. Uh-huh. Why don't you come in Max's place, sir, and have something? No, no, thanks, Jerry. I may stop in later, but right now I want to pick up some things at the hardware store. All right, sir. I'll see you later. Well, okay. Oh, tell Mac hello for me, will you, Jerry? Yes, sir. Hey, Mac. Mac, where are you? Mac. Who? Who, Jerry? I, I, I couldn't have come to know, Jerry. What you doing? Oh, something very, very important, Jerry. Come back here with me. Okay. Come on. Right. Come in, Jerry. Come in. Hey, what's so important back here that you can't wait on a customer? Uh, uh, wait till I close the door, lad, and, and your own in will see what I hear. Uh, no, look around you, Jerry, and tell what your in has seen. Gee, since when, Mac? <laughs> uh, since this morning, lad, uh, since this morning. Uh, look here, since five o'clock, I've been out of bed, puttering around here, and... The new, I think I'm all fixed up. Say, this looks like a regular laboratory. Aye, laddie, aye, aye, that it is. Uh, it may not be as fancy as the big ones I've seen, but it'll do for old McLeod. Aye, aye, it'll do. Say, what's this? Oh, oh, oh that. Uh, uh, that's a retort, Jerry. Uh, aye, uh, a regular retort like they have in the big chemist shops. <laughs> the apparatus came this noon and... I have been putting it up since. <laughs> You're going to be a regular chemist. Oh, I, I, I hope so. Uh, till three this morning, I was up reading books. Oh, lad, uh, there's romance in chemistry. Aye, uh, that there is. Well, will it help you fix up a double chocolate nut sundae? Oh, whoosh, lad. You're talking about sundaes, and I'm talking about chemistry. Uh, look, you. I've got an experiment all lined up, ready to go. I'm making hydrogen. Hydrogen? Mm. Oh, that's a gas, isn't it? Aye, that it is. Look at the nose. See this? Yeah. There's a little capsule on the end of a stiff wire. Now watch. And I'll show you something. I take a bottle of a metallic sodium. That funny stuff? Aye, aye. It's, it's put in oil because it's dangerous stuff in water. Now what? watch. Aye, just a little of the sodium in the tiny capsule. Like this. Fuck it, Dune. No, no, uh, hand me that empty bottle there, Jerry. Uh, the one with the wide mouth. I, I... Here you are, Mac. I, thank you, laddie. No, watch carefully, Jerry, and you'll see the gas, the hydrogen, made before your very eyes. So, uh, this basin of water, I'll put the capsule down into the water and watch. Say, what's that doing? Uh, well, uh, the action of the water and the sodium liberates, frees the hydrogen gas, Jerry. I can't explain why they do, but but watch, I'll, I'll put the bottle over the bubble and, and catch the gas. Now watch. Right, aye, that does it. Right. Ah, no, uh, the bottle is full of hydrogen gas. And I have turned the mouth of the bottle down because hydrogen is lighter than air and will escape if I turn the bottle up. Uh, you can. Uh, now, now watch, Jerry. Hey, what you gonna do? Bloody... In that bottle is one of the best and yet the worst gases that mankind have got for themselves. It'll carry balloons and dirigibles up in the air, but touch a match to it, like this, and... Oh, it exploded. Aye, exactly, Jerry, exactly, and you can imagine what a whole tank full would sound like. Aye, it would blow the roof off a of creation. <laughs> interesting, very, very interesting. Now I'm going to make some more. Watch, Jerry. I'll put the capsule down again and... 
Oh, lost your customer, and I'm mixed up holding this. I'll, I'll hold it, Mac. You wait oh, on the customer. Oh, no, no, lost lad. This is too dangerous for a beginner. You wait on the customer. I'll I'll hurry out as fast as I can. All right, Mac. I... Oh. Oh, I beg pardon. Is Mr. McLeod about? Why, he's busy now, Bruce. But I'll wait on you. Mac said I should. Oh, I see. Well, uh, I, I, I'd like some stationery. What kind? Oh, any kind, I suppose. I think it's in this case. Yeah. Yeah, there it is. Here you are. Thank you. How much, please? Mm, it says 50 cents on the box. Thank you. Hey, where have you been keeping yourself, Bruce? We haven't seen much of you. Really? Oh, I don't have 50 cents in change. Here's a dollar. Okay, I'll get Mac to change it. Say, why don't you come around once in a while and get acquainted? I believe we are acquainted, Mr. Jugan. Oh, I mean, we could have some good times together, you and Lee and I. No, thank you. Oh, what do you hang around Red Morrison for? I beg your pardon, Mr. Jugan, but I can choose my own friends. Oh, oh, sure. Now, would you mind giving me the stationery and getting my change? Oh, sure. Here you are. But, uh, say, uh... I really meant that about coming around once in a while. I know how you feel, being strange and all that. I felt that way, too. Really? But I don't have the slightest interest in your personal feelings, Mr. Dugan. Nor do I care to be told about mine. Thank you. Okay, okay. I was just trying to be, be friendly. If you want to hang with Red, that's your business. Exactly. It's my business. Sure, but... Well, I, I think you're being a sap. I'll thank you not to call me names, Mr. Dugan. Who called you names? Unless my hearing is very bad, you did. Oh, you're crazy. I expect an apology for that remark. Yeah? Well, try and get it. Mr. Dugan, once before we very nearly got into a fight. And this time I might say we're very close to it again. If you want to fight about somebody trying to be friendly, well, then you are a sap. Really? I don't think you're a gentleman, Mr. Dugan. And that, to me, is even a worse insult than being called a, a sap. Yeah? Yeah, but you wouldn't understand. Hey, you better cut it out. I see no reason to hold my tongue. Really? You're very childish, Jugan. It goes for you, too, Mr. Bruce Dow, the camels are... I... Hey, 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 you can't hit me and get away with it. Wait till I get around this corn. I'll Come. be right here, Jugan. Okay, I'm coming. Hey, 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 what's all I'm shouting about? Jerry, Bruce, I held every word of that. Now stop it, stop it. I'll have no quarreling in my establishment. Uh, none of it. Now I'm stop sorry, it. Mac. I just tried to fix things up. Really? Well, you chose an odd way, Dugan. And stop calling me Dugan. Uh, lads, 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 lads. Now, stop it. Stop it, I say. I'll have no fighting here. Don't worry, Mr. McLeod. I'm leaving. But Dugan knows where he can find me if he wishes to continue our, our discussion. <laughs> 